If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Welcome to the demonstration series for the Smart Zone controller based on a high scale deployment of the 5.2 Smart Zone release. The videos in this series will show you the basic configuration of many aspects of the controller. In this video, I will provide information on associating administrative accounts in SmartZone to group privileges. So let's get started. I have already logged into a SmartZone instance using a super admin account. We can observe that this is a high scale instance and is the 5.2 SmartZone release. Under the grouping in the middle, we can see that there are a few partner domains and subdomains already configured. To examine those domains in more detail, we can click on the Access Points tab and see the domain associations. Under the System domain, we have a total of four other domains configured. Two are partner domains, indicated by the white box and the D in the admin icons. This provides an administrative boundary where we can associate specific administrative accounts to them limiting their access to only those domains. Additionally, we can control their access within that partner domain by specifying what privileges they will have when they log in. This is done by the use of an administrative group. Secondly, we see two subdomains configured that are under the system domain. Although these do not have the same administrative boundaries that partner domains have, we can still associate specific account privileges to these domains through the same administrative group process. Currently, we have one group configured, which is typically established when the SmartZone instance is created. Any accounts that are associated with this group will be granted full access to the SmartZone instance if the account was first established underneath the system domain when it was created. If not, the account is not eligible to be associated with this group, but instead can be associated with a group established under their matching partner domain. If you recall, we had one account associated with each one of these domains listed here, so we can now create groups specific to those domains and then associate the accounts to them. To do this, we first click on the Groups tab, then select the domain we want to create the group under, and then press Create. Note that once we select a different domain other than the system domain, the view to the right filters to only the groups created underneath that domain. Currently, there are no groups created under the partner domain one, so let's create one now. When the create user group window appears, we can see that the first prompts are to configure a mandatory name of the group, an optional description, and then two other mandatory settings for permission and account security. The permission field offers the ability to select a predefined profile that were established when the SmartZone instance was first created. Listed here are the default profiles established in SmartZone with typical roles administrators might be assigned to perform. If any of these profiles meet the requirements for this group you are configuring, you can simply select the profile and those privileges will be pre-selected as you move through the rest of this group creation. If none of the pre-configured profiles meet your requirements for this group, you can simply select the custom and in the next windows you can specifically assign the privileges you need for this group. The third required window provides the ability to create a security profile specifying the security measures you want to establish for this group. If the profile was previously configured, you can choose it from the drop-down window, or you can use the default profile provided, which can be modified as well. If you'd like to create a new security profile, click on the plus sign, name it, and then configure your security preferences. Once these fields have been configured, press the OK and the profile will be applied to this group. Once you have selected your permissions and account security profile, press the Next button to view the resources or permissions that have been selected. If a custom permissions is selected, the screen will allow you to assign the resources you want along with their level of access. Once the level has been chosen to add the resource to the group, simply select it and then press the right arrow 
to move it to the selected resources column. Once your preferences have been selected, press Next. The Next window provides the ability to assign the group to the whole domain this group is being configured under or specify a subdomain under that partner domain if you have it configured. If you choose the partner domain here, then the accounts associated with this group will be able to administer it and all subdomains within that partner domain. If the subdomain is chosen, group members will be limited to administering that subdomain only. Select the domain you prefer, then click the arrow to move it to the selected domains window. We can now see that any accounts that have been established under this partner domain and then we can choose them to add them to the group. We can also at this point create accounts under the partner domain and assign them to this group by clicking on the plus sign and filling out the required fields. In this example, we will simply select the pre-configured account and add it to the group. The final step is to review the group configuration, ensuring you have configured it for your requirements. If anything needs to be adjusted, you can either press the back button or simply click on the boxes above to make your changes. Once the group has been configured correctly, then press OK. Once the group has been configured, the user can log in and have the privileges assigned to it based on its group membership. If at any point you want to adjust your group preferences or add new administrator accounts to the group, you can select the group and then press Configure. Now that the account and its group membership has been established, they can now log into SmartZone. It is important to understand that if the account was configured under a partner domain, the user's credentials will need to include the domain name that is assigned to it. Once the user is logged in, you will be able to see that they have access to the domain they are assigned to with the privileges that you have configured in their group that they're assigned. Thanks for taking time to view this demonstration. Thank you.